In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Nextbase 522GW dash cam. We are going to do an unboxing, going over the features, then we're going to do an installation as we put it into my 2020 Dodge Challenger 1320 here, and then finally we'll end it with a review, see how it performs, get some video, and see what we think. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have the Nextbase dash cam 522GW. Now, full disclosure, I am part of a program through a retailer where they work with manufacturers of different products, and they have a bunch of people that just are known for writing reviews, and they will coordinate these manufacturers to send their products to people to review and such. Now, normally, I don't add these products to my channel because they're not really car-related, but this is car-related, so this is perfect for my channel. So now, that said... I try to be as objective as possible. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this camera first. So this isn't quite the best one they have. They have a 622 also, which I wish I could have gotten. But this one's still pretty good. This one has QHD, which is 1440p, a GPS mount, high definition, three inch touch screen, GPS, connects to Wi-Fi, built in with Alexa. And then inside, we should find the dash cam, the mount, a power cable, USB cable, a spare window mount, a fitting tool, and of course a quick start guide. Now you do need a micro SD card for this. Now they did send me one. They make their own SD cards. And normally this is not included. You have to buy this separate, but they sent it to me with it. So this is a 64 gigabyte. And from what I understand, especially if you get the rear cam module, which this does not have, you want to have at least a U3. It's like an ultra high speed SD card. You don't have to get their brand. You just have to make sure you get a good enough SD card for it. Okay, let's open this puppy up. All right, we get a little congratulations here. Easy peel sticker. What is this? Oh, it's just your typical warning, protected by security sticker that, you know, you see on houses and businesses all the time. I'm not going to use this on my car. Here's the quick start guide. And looks pretty straightforward as most guides are nowadays. It's pretty much just play by pictures and minimal verbiage to read through. And this is the camera itself. Let's take out this bag. And that is it. So it's not very big. And we'll get a better look at this later. So just to give you a little size comparison, this is a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So it's like the largest smartphone you can get, basically. Or pretty close to it. So that's about the size comparison there. Let's see what else we got in here. A little cushioning. And then got a QR code to basically get started. This is going to be the little mount for the windshield. We've got USB cable. Although I am kind of surprised. This, is, this isn't this is even micro USB. This is like old school. What do they even call this? Mini U? I don't even remember what they call this one. Kind of surprised that on a newer product, they're still using this. Everybody should be going to USB-C by now. Kind of crazy to me that they would use that. And then this must be their quick fitting tool. I believe this is to kind of route the wires underneath the headliner, maybe. I won't need this, and you will see why I won't need it, if that's what it's for. We'll find out. And then we have just a the extra spare mount, I guess that is. And then we have the power cable, which is just your 12-volt DC plug. And again, that old-school USB, like, so old. All right, and that's everything. That's what comes in the box. So let me go ahead. I'm going to review this guide really quick, see what the steps are gonna be, and then we're gonna go to my car, get this installed. Okay, so really quick, before we get to the installation, I just wanna go over one thing really quick. Now in the quick start guide, it says, hey, go to nextspace.com slash get started 522. And unfortunately, that doesn't work. So you probably need to update that because when you go to it, it just goes to this. The page you are looking for is not active. So <laughs> that's not it. But um, just go to the menu. Just go to dash cams. And then you can actually find the 522. And this site actually has a lot of good info. But on this page, go down to the specification area and it has dash cam support right here. Just click on that. And then you've got all kinds of cool stuff. You just choose manual, pick your language. 
and you'll actually download a PDF of the manual and it's actually a pretty good manual it's much more detailed than that quick start guide so now let's take a closer look at this camera really quick before we install it all right so now as i just said i just want to go over this camera really quick so obviously you have the lens here the filter we'll pull the protective stuff off once we get installed so here's a little cover which you have to pull off and it's honestly just a little piece of cardboard so this is where it hooks up to the mount and this uses that same kind of magnet you have on hard drives very, very strong magnet like. I mean, it's not even on there fully and it's, it's holding on tight. Once it's in there all the way, that camera's going nowhere. So this is a three inch touch screen. Right here, I don't know if you see there's two little dots. Uh, those are actually LED lights. So top one is blue, bottom one is red. When it's charging, the blue light turns on. When it's uncharging, blue light is off, which I've already charged this, so we're good there. Because I say you should charge it before you plug it in, even though this is plugged into the car. And then the red little light right there is when it's recording. And then right here, you have two little holes, one here and one here. That is actually the microphone. This little button here will actually save recording. So when you're driving along and you want to save a, a clip, you press that. And what that does is kind of protects the clip. And according to the guy, it creates a file with the previous 10 seconds and the next 20 seconds after. And then going on the bottom side here underneath, we have a hard reset that just resets the dash cam and that is actually a light sensor. So there's like settings for auto dimming on the screen and that is what it uses to sense all that. And then right here on the power button, that is the SD card slot. So I've already formatted this SD card, which we'll talk about this in just a second as well. SD card is installed, so we got that step taken care of. On the top here, you'll see right here, this is the USB cable. So this is where you'll plug in the cam to your car. By the way, they do sell a hard wire kit, which you can buy separately if you don't want to use your uh, cigarette lighter area, which do people even call that anymore? Cause like, anyway. And then on this side, we have another port. This one is for, you can hook it up with a special cable to like a TV or probably most likely if you get the rear cam module, it actually will plug into this and that way this can run both the front and rear. Now this does do 1440p. It said if you have a rear cam module, it'll do both front and rear at 1080p each or if you want to keep this at 1440, then a rear would only be 720p. We don't have the rear cam module, so it matter, but just thought I'd mention that really quick. And then according to Guy, this is the speaker. And then also when we set it up, this ring turns to kind of focus. We'll go over that once we go through the install because there's something you need to do with that. So that's the camera. Now really quick, the SD card. Just want to bring this up. So the, you want a U3 card. You don't have to get an X space, but it's good to get one. But in case you were wondering, so I got a 64 gig card and it says that it the 64 gig card will record about eight hours of HD footage before it starts overwriting the oldest stuff or four hours if you're using a rear camera. So that's that. So let's go ahead and do the install now. Okay, so we're out here at my car and we're about to install it. And now you need to find out what I meant by my install might be a little easier than most people. So for those that are new to my channel, I race my car. And my approach to racing is weight reduction. And so my car is a little bit gutted to the point where I don't even have a headliner. <laughs> so that's gonna make this install so much easier. If you were to put this into a Challenger, there's already the wiring for the rear view mirror is already has a pathway around. And so I'm just gonna follow that pathway to go all the way down. So we're gonna mount the camera right here. And here is one 12 volt connector here. And then I have one in my center console also. And I have to double check. I don't know that this one's always on. Actually, this one might be better because this may only come on when the key ignition is on, which I might want right now, I'm not sure. Whereas I do know the one inside here is actually powered on all the time, even when the ignition is off. So we'll figure that out. Either way, we'll have plenty of cable, run it through, and then bring it to at least here. And eventually I do want to get the hardware kit. So with that said, first I do suggest you probably want to clean your windshield. Just make sure you have a clean surface, which I already did that. So first we want to position this camera. Again, once you take that little cover off, snap this into place. And now when you put in a power cable, you actually don't use this spot here. You actually want to plug it into right here. And this little part right here comes off. So if you want, just move it right. This comes off and they give you an extra one. So you can always put this in two different vehicles or spots and just pull it off and, you know, put it wherever you want. So now... Basically, I'm gonna put it kind of right about here. And obviously this thing's on a swivel, so you can move it. Let me just align this. Okay, so now that we got this on here, there's not a lot of room for 
adjusting. Once this thing is on, it's on. I got a little bit close to this mirror, but that's okay. Worst case, there's a second one of these. I can always adjust it. And we're going to plug this in. And again, this goes into the mount area. So that kind of sucks that this fuse thing is so close to here. Because now, obviously, it's going to be right here. But what I want to do is route it through here. There we go. Okay, see, so I'm just going to follow this along here. So let me get to the other side. Okay, I'm just going to speed up this process in the video. Okay, so I got it all routed. So basically, again, camera's right here. I got it up through here and through these clips. And I've got it kind of going along this way or right here, down in here. And since I have no trim, now this, for like a Challenger, it's simple. This little cluster bezel just pops right out, which I already had out. And then I kind of ran it behind here. And it's kind of hard to see, but I've got over here. And then just right underneath the dash cluster, there's a spot going through here, then under this radio here, and then out here, and then out from under where the glove box will be. And then here we go. Here is the full boat adapter. And this cable is just about long enough to route it like this. So I've got pretty much comes out right here, which is good. So for now, I'm actually going to plug it into this DC adapter right here because I know this one has continuous power. And you can see the blue light has come on. Let me go the other side and we'll finish this up. Now that we're back on this side, let's pull this off. There we go, English US, okay. First time installation, use the following menus to adjust your dash cam settings for country and speed unit. These settings will establish your time zone, daylight savings time, blah, blah, blah. Location, USA, select region, I am in central. And we got mile per hour. Dash cam will automatically set the time and date when a satellite signal has been received. Okay, we're inside the garage, so we're probably not gonna get it. Uh, we can enable Alexa emergency SOS. Your dash cam needs to be linked to your phone. So let's do that part now. Okay, so we're going to Play Store. We're gonna find My Next Space Connect. And unfortunately, it does not have very good reviews. Uh, let's just take a quick look at them. Literally unusable. Just use the micro SD card and take the data from there. Well, that's not good. And that's just from the other day. Uh, I agree with everybody. Oh my gosh. The cam looks fine. App needs work. Wow. So not very good review. So you can use this without an app. Okay. Open. License agreement. Yes. Okay. This is made for all these. So basically the 22, 23, 24 series, 522. So... Let's go there. Okay, please choose your dash cam model, 522. I just hit continue. Yes, allow location, Bluetooth disabled. Oh, let me turn on Bluetooth. All right, Bluetooth is on. It's searching for the dash cam. Hopefully it finds it. Okay, maybe we have to press okay to get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> we should have pressed next. So yes, yes, yeah. Okay, and it did find it. So we are on that. That is what we have. It should be connecting, pair. And there we go. And we immediately have a, a software update for the dash cam. So it currently has 19.9 .9 and it is up to version 21.5. So let's just go ahead. Since we're here, we're using it. We're at my house. I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. So let's download and install now. Okay, so we are having an issue because it's saying it has an SD card error. I don't know why I formatted it. I formatted it on my Mac, which... According to the guide that I downloaded, it said it's fine on a Mac, but let's just go through here and let's just go ahead and format it through the camera. Format successful. Now let's try this again. Install now. So it's finishing the firmware update. Okay, so it is updated. It is good to go. And since it's on power source, it's actually already running and recording. So just hit continue. So set up. I don't know that I want to use these yet, so I'm just going to skip the setup for now. We can always get back to it later. Okay, so now we are on home screen. Oh, open live view. Well, it takes a while, but there it is. So it is connected now. Now, it didn't tell me on the app, but I did read in the guide, again, this paper. So you can see the reflection. You can see, hey, you can see my hand reflection there too. So now what we have to do is take this lens where it turns you're supposed to turn it until you can't see the paper notice it's getting a little bit more translucent now it says you'll never not see the paper completely uh you just want as light as possible now there it's obviously really bright so right about there 
is going to be the lightest. Now, I'm sure part of the problem is, is I have these like lights because I'm recording, and that's probably creating a more reflection. And I'm on inside of a garage. So once we're outside, this should probably change. But the camera's installed right now. So next step, let's just get on the road and see how it records. Okay, so I'm back here in the car. I've done a little bit of driving, a little bit of recording. I saved the file on this dash cam. And before we pull the card out and see what it looks like, we're going to check out the app and see how that works. So first, let me turn this on. So that is now on. Battery is low. Now, I'm going to be honest, I haven't driven the car in a couple days. So it drains fairly quick, apparently. And part of that is because I have it connected to the AC, the DC adapter, I should say, that doesn't have continuous power and it just turned off. So let me go ahead and plug this into the one that's continuous. But let's go ahead, open up the app. This is the home screen. We don't need to worry about this. We don't care about that. And it shows it's connected, so it must have connected automatically. So now it's establishing a Wi-Fi connection. Now it looks like it's loading up all the files. And I could see two locked ones, which I did press the button to record the clip two times. So that's probably those protected ones. So I'm guessing as it records more info, when it needs to overwrite old ones, it obviously will not overwrite the locked ones. And so here you could see... Looks like the first files are going to be right when I plugged it in and started it up. And it's still loading all of those. Okay, so we have all these files loaded. And it's already thrown up here, the one from just now, when I turned it on. So there's already a recording here for that. Let's just go ahead, non-protected one. And let's just tap on one, see what happens. The dash cam has stopped recording. So I guess when you're trying to run this, it'll stop recording. So I'd say so far that looks pretty good. So apparently it can show you a map. Please connect to the internet and try again. I need to look that up, not sure what that's about, but that'd be pretty cool if it can show you a map of where you're driving. Quite a bit of road noise right now, as you can hear, but that's all right. Let's go telemetry. Oh, interesting. So it's, it's uh, showing you the exact direction that you're going in, miles per hour. So there's some more dots here. So what is this? I have no idea what this all means. I'm gonna have to look it up. And then we got max speed, 67 average speed, distance, 0.77. So I'm guessing those are the stats for this specific clip. I don't know how long the clip is. 55 seconds. So I think, let's just see, is it all in 55 second in increments? Well, this one's one minute. So this is kind of cool. So it's actually showing you the exact speed and direction you're facing at the same time of that moment in the clip. Okay, let's go to one of my saved files. So here's this one, still no map. Oh wait, I think the button, we just press here. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> There's a way to enlarge it. So you just press that full screen button there. So right here, we've got some different things. There's the date time, which I'm gonna need to fix that because from what I understand, this is based in the UK, so in Europe, they do the day first, then the month, versus here in the U.S., we usually do month and day, so I need to change that. Ugh, again, that sound does not sound very good. So when you're in the app, you're looking at a clip, there's these three dots up here, and you can either delete the clip, unlock it to basically say, hey, I don't need it, so you can overwrite it, which if you're doing that, you may as well just delete if you don't need it, or download. So let's do that. Let's download it. See what happens. It's downloading one file at a very slow rate, two, two megabytes per second. And I'm, as you can see, right next to it. All right, download completed. Okay, so now let's go back. Uh, let's go to dash cam. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's actually the page we were on. Library. So anything downloaded shows up into your library, which is good to know. I'm not going to press SOS. Actually, you know what? Let's press it. See what happens. Well, so far, nothing's happening, which is fine. I don't want to call any type of emergency or anything right now. First one year is free for emergency SOS. You have to set it up. I'm probably not going to set up, but I just want to see what it shows. So it monitors to confirm a crash. As soon as it confirms the crash, it sends an SOS directly to the emergency services with location and medical data. I guess the medical data that you put in and program. Then the emergency services will then call you. 
And I guess that's to verify, hey, we got this notification over the dash cam. Do you need help? If you're not able to answer, they're going to send out an ambulance. Otherwise, you answer and be like, oh, I don't know why my dash cam sent you an alert. Everything's okay. Or maybe it'll sense it if you're in a minor accident and don't really need it. Okay, one year free, start now, no credit card. And before the end of your trial period, we'll offer you the option to subscribe. Well, let's hit next and see what happens. Terms and conditions. Let's just hit agree and continue. Sure. And now we need to fill some stuff out. First name, last name. Okay, so next up, we'll send you a verification SMS. So straightforward. Step three, after getting the phone number, you put in your car, make, model, color, fuel type. Next. Okay, here, see, this is the medical information I was talking about. And after filling those out, step five, we'll just go to next. Activation, let's see what happens. Setup complete. So at least you don't have to pay for it at first. You get a year free. There's a little toggle button, which is good because I think I can turn it off. Yes, I can. That's good. I like this because, again, I drag race this car. And if I'm drag racing, well, first of all, I do it on a track in a legal environment. And there are plenty of people around. And most tracks actually have emergency services and ambulances right there on call. Uh, so we don't need emergency SOS if something were to happen there. But also things can get kind of violent in here with the launches and taking off. Things can kind of go crazy. And I don't know if that would be enough to trip this. say, hey, it feels like something hit you or something because... You get some real, really bad wheel hop or anything. I don't think it would. I don't know. So now that's done. We've gone, looked at everything. So far, a lot of the reviews, I read a bunch that said the app is really bad. But honestly, I'm really not having any issues with anything so far. So with that, let's go ahead, put the app down. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead, pull this off, grab the card. And one other thing that I did do that we're going to look at in just a minute is one of the clips that I had recorded I actually had my phone right here recording as well at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and show just a test of quality, the recorded clip from the dash cam and recorded clip from the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G. And I've got the little SD micro SD card out of the dash cam in the little adapter. We're going to go ahead and put this in my laptop and see what we see. And I'm going to switch to a screen recording. So you are going to see exactly what I see on the screen right now. So we have some basic stuff, probably just files that, you know, the next space unit needs. Everything looks like it's going to be inside of this DCIM folder and video folder. I'm expecting to see all the files, which I do. And then if I go back, protected, I'm guessing, are the files that I click to protect. And there they are. Although I don't remember doing it four times. Looks like, what do we got here, 034. So these are the same file, these are the same file with a minor exception. Instead of the last letter being an one, it's an H, the other is an L. I don't know the difference. So let's go ahead, pull them up. Let's just see what happens. And we do have audio and oh my gosh, the audio is so bad. Okay, so this is the file that ends in FH. Now let's go to FL, see what pops up. And here is FL. Okay, I think the two different files are low quality, high quality, because this looks much choppier. Let's just go ahead and check the properties of the files to find out for sure. So FH, get info, and we see it is 94 megabytes, whereas this other one is 10 megabyte MP4. So, okay, so that's what it does. It saves two different versions of the same file, one in low quality, one in high quality. Honestly, so far, man, I'm, I kind of like this camera. Everything looks good. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna download the video from my phone and we're gonna do a little side-by-side -side comparison.
And there you have it, the next Space 522 GW dash cam. Overall, it's a great camera. The video looks awesome. It beats my phone, as you clearly can see. The colors are more vibrant. It's clear. It's just a much better quality picture. Video is really good. Really easy to access it with through the app or pulling the SD card out and going to your computer. Uh, again, the app, even though it had a lot of bad reviews, I didn't have any issues with it. I mean, everything was working as it should. No problems at all, so I'm not sure what the deal was there, but everything worked great for me. Has plenty of settings, plenty of space, even with the 64 gig card, and it's expandable. There's a rear cam module, which I'm probably gonna buy, and when I get that, I'll do a separate video on that. So yeah, I wish I did get the 622, but honestly, this is plenty good enough. So the only reason I really want that other one is because I do have a YouTube channel and I will be using this dash cam to record footage for some of my videos, especially when I go to the drag strip. That's not to say this isn't good. It's actually great. I mean, a lot of my videos are 1080p and this meets that perfectly. So I don't do a lot of 4K videos anyway right now. So this is perfect for that. Like I said, normally I've just for a dash cam just been using my phone, which we clearly see is not as good as this. Now, the only one downside, the one negative, is the audio. The audio is just so bad. So, with all that said, I hope this video helped you out. If you're looking at dash cams, you really can't go wrong with the next space. I definitely would recommend it. If you have any questions, comment down below. And then don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you at the drag strip.